Good evening. I'd like to call the regular school committee meeting to order. Today is Tuesday, September 27, 2022, and we are starting our meeting tonight at 7.16 p.m. Apologize that we're a little behind schedule. Our regular schedule meeting was for, set for 7, but we were in executive session, and we'll be making a report on, uh, on that item very shortly. As always, our meeting is being broadcast live on PAT. Our minutes for the meeting are being recorded by our recording secretary, Leanna Harris. And as usual, um, if anybody that would like to speak during public participation, uh, can, you can access the meeting uh, through the platform on Facebook and raise your hand and we can bring you in uh, for public comment. I'd like to start the meeting with a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for one for ends, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. We do have minutes from the September 13, 2022 regular school committee meeting. I'd open, uh, open that up for a motion. Motion to accept and approve regular school committee meeting minutes of September 13th, 2022. Okay, thank you. You've heard the motion by Mrs. Carpenter for approval of the September 13th, 2022 regular school committee meeting minutes, seconded by Mr. Amico. Roll call vote for approval, please. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Swanson? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Thank you, and we do have two bills and two warrants to be approved tonight. Item number three, approval of bills. I'll turn it to you, Mr. Olympio. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to approve warrant number 5156 in the amount of $2,185,900.41 dated September 27, 2022, subject to audit. Okay, thank you, Mr. Olympio. You've heard the motion for approval of warrant number 5156, seconded by Mrs. Carpenter. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Swanson? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve, approve warrant 5158 in the amount of $56,571.26 dated September 27, 2022, subject to audit. Second. Thank you. You've heard the motion by Mr. Olympio for approval Approval of warrant number 5158, seconded by Mrs. Carpenter. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Swanson? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Okay, terrific. Thank you, everyone. Uh, if there's no objection, I'd like to go out of order a little bit. Uh, we have some special guests at the meeting tonight that I wanted to uh, have brought in at this time. If there's no objection, I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Vidala. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We do have three special guests today. If you could come up and join us. Uh, we have our DECA advisor, Mr. Lenny Brand, and we have two of our students, uh, Jess and Angie Duda, and uh, they would like to talk tonight about a great experience, uh, the New York City experience through DECA uh, in November. So I have a slide to share, and, uh, and we'll let you take it away, Mr. Brand. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to um, come and talk to you about this really great trip uh, with me. As you mentioned, uh, uh, Jesse and Angie Duda, they're four-year DECA stars who have been uh, instrumental in making uh, our club grow. I do want to clarify, I tried to pre-register us from November 30th to December 3rd, but it was sold out in 20 minutes, so um, we rescheduled again, uh, with your approval for November 16th to November 19th. Um, and again, it's in between sports seasons. The only uh, teams uh, in action would be the football team. OK, 
Okay. Uh, so our plan is to go uh, by train, and we'd arrive at Penn Station, which is right across the street from the uh, Wyndham Hotel. Um, and I lost my train of thought here. And like I said, it's from November 16th to 19th. There's a lot of activities that I'm going to have uh, Jess and Angie uh, talk about. Um, my name is Jess Duda. I'm a four-year DECA student, and I'm really looking forward to this because this is my first trip. I didn't go as a freshman. I was a little intimidated, but now I'm really excited to get the chance to go. And um, I was at New York this summer, but I'm excited to go back with my school to kind of have a new experience. So in our trip to New York, we're going to attend two six-hour classroom sessions, and through those, we're going to learn more about business and different categories that we engage ourselves in and kind of sort of um, a little bit of how to better ourselves, to do better in competitions and attend more events in other locations. Um, obviously, it's a hefty cost to go, but um, my sister and I are really excited because it's our senior year, so we figured why not do it. But we're going to try and help encourage other students to go and make it cheaper by doing some fundraising. And I'll pass it to my sister. Um, as Mr. Rand and my sister said, um, my name is Angela Duda, and I'm a four-year DECA student. And me and my peers are really looking forward to this DECA trip because the past years that we've been in DECA, COVID has been a major problem. So we've missed out on a lot of opportunities to do better in DECA and get more involved. Um, so some more educational parts of the trip are we're going to tour Madison Square Garden, and we're going to learn how they market their facility to their customers. We're also going to be visiting the 9-11 memorial in the museum. And we're also going to be presenting to the Federal Reserve about DECA. Um, as my sister mentioned, we need to fundraise for this event because it is very expensive and we want as many people to go as, they, as we can. So some of our fundraising plans are we're going to have some corporate sponsors. We're going to have individual sponsorships. So that could be like someone's family members offered to donate money to them going to this trip or their friends. Um, we're also working on fundraising with different restaurants to try and raise more money for DECA. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk. Does anybody have any questions? Great. Thank you both. That was very well, well said and well done. Let's open it up. Any questions for Jess or Angie or Mr. Brand? Mr. Hockman? Motion to approve the request. Second. Second. Jeez, you guys did a great job. There's not even a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> We're just voting yes. Um, so motion was made by Mr. Hockman, seconded by Mr. Swanson on the motion. We do have a question. Mr. Amico. Mr. Brand, thank you. Thank you for all you do. Um, I'm fortunate to have a daughter who uh, is in DECA, um, loves your group. Um, you, you guys are awesome at the International Festival, selling your Dorito bags with chili in it or whatever it was. I think you guys sold out, so you guys were great. Um, Mr. Brand, what's the total cost per student and how many students are going, just so we know? Um, it's, it's $645. Per student? Yes, per student. And right now, uh, Future, eight, sorry. 18 students have signed up. Okay. We're only going to take 20 because there's a, there's a 1 to 10 ratio for... Um, Chaperones. So 20 at 700. Okay. Thank you. Um, please let us know um, what we can do individually. And if you need any uh, help fundraising, I, uh, I love doing that. So we appreciate it. Thank glad you. Glad to help out in any Thank way. You. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miko. Any other questions? This is done. Thank you. Welcome. You did a good job pre presenting this, and the reputation of our DECA program is one that the school committee knows you're top, top notch. So what you want to do is something we want to support. Looking at this, it really does sound like quite a trip. And uh, are there any things in particular that you are looking forward to? Um, so I've been looking into this trip a lot with Mr. Brandon in, in our DECA class. And I'm really excited to learn, to go to the different six-hour sessions and learn more about the competition that we're going to in December. So then hopefully I can make it to states and maybe nationals in the winter. Very good. 
Yeah, like my sister said, um, I was lucky enough to qualify for states my freshman and sophomore year, so I got the chance to go. Um, but I do feel like it was kind of pure luck that I went, so I'm really looking forward to learning more about DACA and how I can do better in myself because I'm now thinking about doing it by myself instead of with a partner, so up for the challenge. <laughs> Very good. Now, as far as the national, I know that's what you all work towards. Where will that be held this Orlando. year? Orlando. Orlando. Oh, yes. boy, there's some incentive right there. Yes. All right. Learn everything you can on this trip, right? Exactly. Good. All right. Well, I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Any other questions? Okay, we have a motion on the table, on the floor. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Swanson? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Great, congratulations, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Actually, I wanted to see if we could go to item, if there's no objection, I wanted to see if we could go to item 3C, uh, the Holocaust and Genocide Studies. Could we take that up now, Dr. Vidala? Absolutely. Okay, so this is under, um, each, each month we'll be talking about the SMART goals that we're working towards. Um, and as you know, our student learning goal is fostering a sense of hope for every student every day by increasing the number of students that meet or exceed expectations on the assessments. And there's really three core principles under this that, that we think uh, can help us achieve this goal. And the first one is utilizing high quality instructional materials. So I'll talk a little bit about that later in the superintendent's report around our elementary ELA curriculum implementation and our middle school science curriculum. Uh, also providing professional learning to enhance our curriculum such as the civics and the Holocaust and genocide studies. Uh, and then finally supporting our students through acceleration opportunities. So that's sort of the context of, of this discussion, but I do want to jump ahead uh, to the work that we'll be doing in civics in the Holocaust and genocide studies, and I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Chase uh, for an update in this area. Thank you. So on this slide, we put the civics and Holocaust genocide studies work together because they really do go hand in hand. They are both required by the state. Um, and the civics portion of this really ties into students being able to find their voice and being able to, to speak up. Um, and that ties directly into being an upstander versus a bystander. Um, so with that, we began the year with professional development that was tied into the civics piece and brought in our partners with Primary Source. Uh, Primary Source is a well-known organization that really provides rigorous professional learning for teachers and educators um, nationwide. Um, and we brought them in to begin the discussion of how do you facilitate discussion around difficult topics, knowing that this was one of those topics that would come up throughout the year. And so we really wanted to give teachers a safe space to be able to talk about um, those challenges, how to navigate through difficult conversations, how to steer a conversation so that kids get the most learning out of it, and how to work within the rules of discourse so that everyone could take away from the learning. From that foundation, we look towards November, and that's when we really wanna talk about the why. Why is it that we need to have Holocaust genocide studies? What is the importance and value of that? So with that being said, all of our grades six through 12, history, social studies, and ELA teachers will come together and Emily Moore, who is our Director of Curriculum Instruction for the Humanities side of things, and I have been working with um, Debbie Colton from the Lappin Foundation. She has been a wonderful resource in connecting us with people who can help us with this understanding of the why. So in November, um, she will be orchestrating our PD Day and has informed us that she's been able to work with some partners um, Michael Gruenbaum, who is a Holocaust survivor, will be zoomed into the meeting to give testimony as to why this is such important study. Um, we will kick off the day with State Representative Vanna Howard from Lowell, who co-sponsored the legislation and will speak to the reasons why she wanted to co-sponsor that. 
So with those conversations, we know that that will be the beginning of a much larger discussion as to the why. And then from there, we need to move into the how. So how do you begin? Where are there crossovers in what we do already? And that's what Ms. Moore is working on behind the scenes. So she's taken an inventory of where are there natural places that teachers have identified that they do have discussions about Holocaust and genocide studies, and then how can we grow from there? Um, from there, in the springtime, uh, there will be ongoing PD as teachers take on these projects. Um, some of those projects might be tied into civics. We don't know because that's, the, that's where the kids get to have a voice. So who knows what kind of projects and education will come out of that. Um, and we will continue to work with um, Debbie Colton and the foundation to see what offerings we can do beyond this so that teachers build their knowledge. Um, it's a difficult subject to teach and we wanna make sure that they have every opportunity along the way to build up their confidence in being able to tackle such difficult topics. And for that, I'll pause, see if there are any questions. Thank you, Dr. Chase. I'll open it up, Mr. Hockman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Dr. Chase, Dr. Vidala, uh, Dr. Higgins for leadership within our school district on this really important subject. Um, we saw not too long ago, uh, two weeks ago, uh, um, people, um, cowards, who were standing um, on busy streets in communities surrounding Peabody, uh, holding up signs saying, Jews caused 9-11. Wearing masks, that's why I call them cowards. Not even willing to show their faces. I'm a big believer in the First Amendment. I think everyone has a right to express their opinion, um, but you, you suffer consequences with opinions that you present. And when you cover your face and you're not willing to stand behind your own opinions, in my, in my opinion, you're a coward. Uh, in any event, um, thank you for evoking the memory of Sonia Weitz by bringing up the term that she coined upstander. And, and we used to, uh, I don't think, we, I don't think uh, the Holocaust Center of the North Shore still gives out those awards, but they used to give out when Sonia was still alive, uh, awards to teenagers who would, were, would exemplify what Sonia meant by an upstander. And it really had nothing to do with race or religion or, or um, gender or gender identification. It, it encompassed all of it. Uh, she would uh, receive nominations from people all over the North Shore um, for teenagers who stood up for somebody, just was willing to sacrifice um, or, or know that they might get some peer pressure and they might, they might uh, take on some heat because they stood up for someone that was getting um, treated, maltreated. And uh, over the course of the years, I got to know a lot of those recipients, award recipients, upstander award recipients, and they're terrific kids. One of them, who I know fairly well belongs to my temple, is actually at uh, Mount Holyoke now uh, studying to be a rabbi. Um, so it, it's, it, it evoked a lot of good memories, so I appreciate that. Um, but I also want to give the city of Peabody credit and the mayor credit um, because uh, this past, s uh, yesterday, I got to spend a, a morning at the Peabody Veterans Memorial High School Auditorium uh, and there was no school going on. And the reason that I got to spend the morning there is because the temple I belong to is currently being renovated. And yesterday morning was the first service for Rosh Hashanah, our new year, and we didn't have a place to worship. And uh, a member of my temple who leads the worship committee, she reached out to the mayor, she reached out to superintendent, she reached out to um, Principal Randall, and um, the way it was reported back to me is it wasn't even a thought, there wasn't even a question. It took a, a half of a half of a second. That's a quarter of a second for those DECA kids. Uh, and uh, that's where uh, 100 of my fellow congregants or so, about 100, uh, chose, ch were able to, not chose to, but were able to worship yesterday on the beginning of our holiest time of the year. So the city of Peabody, uh, everybody needs to learn this stuff, right? That's why there's legislation, because it wasn't being done. Uh, so everybody needs to learn to love and to accept and to um, be more tolerant and be a better person. So I'm glad to see that we're doing it in a meaningful way. I asked for that, I think, in the spring when, when this came up initially, and I'm, I'm ecstatic to, to see that um, our, my administration, our administration, really took that to heart. And uh, Debbie Colton is a wonderful resource, and she brings, uh, she and the Lappin Foundation bring a lot to the table when it comes to resources for something like this. And you know, what better way to, for, for a student to learn but 
and from a, a witness, from, from, from a, a survivor, from a, from a victim, someone who, who experienced firsthand the horrors that took place in Europe and around the world uh, in the 1930s and 40s. So um, fantastic. I appreciate it as a school committee member. I appreciate it as a parent of a student who's going to go through this studying. Uh, I appreciate it as a human being and, and a resident of the city of Peabody. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Huckman. That uh, very well stated. And uh, Lashana Tova to you and the Jewish community here in Peabody. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, and thank you. That was a, that, um, I'm very proud of, of that report as well and the, and the strides we're making. I think we all feel that way. Uh, that's terrific. Any other questions uh, for Dr. Chase or any of the team? Um, Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Dr. Chase, I'm really thrilled to see that uh, the support is out there for the professional development and with many of the contexts that you're making. And I'd just like to say how lucky we are to live where we do because this area is rich with people who can help to prepare the curriculum for a Holocaust and genocide study course. Um, having the Holocaust Center in Peabody for many years and then it moved to Salem State and they still put out all kinds of really wonderful programs for the public but also a lot of, of research and, and assistance in people in understanding history and making sure that it does not happen again on so many levels. It really truly is a very rich area of, of um, support and, and the depth of knowledge that we're surrounded by uh, right here and bringing it into our students, I think it's it's wonderful because those grades six to 12, those are the ages where our students really do need to learn about this. They need to learn about other cultures and appreciate them and understand why every culture needs to be valued and, and, and protected. And um, sometimes people might say, well, this is, this is too difficult for the kids to learn. It's not. It's not. I know that you'll make it age appropriate. And it is truly necessary to make sure that they grow up through the lessons they get in civics and through this knowledge and making sure that, uh, you know, that they know how to do the right thing. And as Mr. Hockman said, the Upstanders Awards, those were wonderful because you heard great examples of, of young people who stood up for others and they really made a difference and their friends learned from that too. So all in all, I'm pleased to see this coming coming through, putting it on our curriculum, having our students learn it, and knowing that you're reaching out in the area to, to make contact with the people who can really help us with this. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Okay. Uh, again, I would like, if there's no objection, I did want to take up one other item here while we're a full committee. Um, I'd like to report out from our executive session meeting just uh, that we had prior to this evening's regular school committee meeting. Um, we have an agreement in place uh, for a four-year contract extension uh, for Dr. Josh Vidala to remain our school superintendent. Uh, I wanted to bring that forward. Uh, terms certainly be released uh, following the meeting, um, which I'd be happy to present. Um, but I wanted to bring that up for discussion and uh, uh, hopefully a vote this evening. So it would be on a four-year contract extension uh, for Dr. Uh, Josh Vidala to remain our school superintendent. Um, the four years would begin at the end of this school year, uh, June 30th, and it would extend from July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2027. I'd open that up for a discussion. This is done. Motion to follow the recommendation of the mayor and chairperson. So move. Second. You've heard the motion by Mrs. Dunn, seconded by Mrs. Carpenter. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Mr. Olympio? Yes. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Amico? Yes. Mr. Hockman? Yes. Mr. Swanson? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Thank you all very much. And um, I think there was one other item. Oh, please, Dr. Vidala. Uh, I'm, I'm touched. Um, this, this committee uh, has, has really uh, demonstrated a lot of support. Um, and we've 
certainly been through a lot together uh, through COVID and, and as we're coming out, um, I think we've really learned a lot about each other. Um, I'm extremely touched um, for a unanimous vote. I know um, this is you know, a, a, a leap of faith to invest this much time. Um, and you know, as we went through our budget last year, we talked about stability and sustainability. Um, and it just, it makes me really proud to be able to say that we can be here uh, together for the next four years uh, and beyond. Um, and you know, as I've said to you before, I wanna retire here. I'd like to be here for a long time. Um, and I'm very touched and, and humbled um, the fact that, that this was a unanimous vote and that uh, knowing that we have the support moving forward that we can do great things. So thank you so much. Was there any other action? I had got the, uh, to the executive session a few minutes late. Was there any other item that needed to be addressed, Mr. Hockman? Ms. Harris's uh, compensation. So I believe there was a, a motion made to ask, the Dr. Vidala, ask Dr. Vidala to uh, meet with our recording secretary, Leanna, Har Leanna Harris, and just work out some con contractual language uh, to, for her to continue the work she does. Okay, so um, all in favor? Motion made by Mr. Olympio, seconded by Mrs. Carpenter. All in favor of uh, that vote, thank you. And uh, now let's go back to the agenda. Uh, we did kind of step around a little bit today. Uh, let's go to continued business. We did have a couple of items under continued business. The first one is our uh, um, annual report, um, or our meeting report on the Wealth School MSBA project. Mrs. Dunn, anything to report today? Just that the project, of course, is proceeding and that the members of the committee have now moved into a new phase with their uh, service. The meetings are much more detailed because now we're getting monthly reports on the budget and the progress of the, of the uh, construction and you know, the, the delivery of steel. And it, it really, you know, we've, I promised them it would be exciting. I think it's getting much more exciting. And, uh, they seem to be, they seem to be enjoying these meetings because uh, the details are really, really very, very interesting. So, uh, the monthly meeting was held last week. Uh, tomorrow will be our weekly OAC owners architect construction uh, meeting. Those go on, and uh, those have even more details. And then um, we're just going to keep working and making sure that everything stays on track for the movement of the students, and uh, it, it really, really is a great project. So that's all, but I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Any uh, questions for Mrs. Dunn on this item? Okay, thank you. Our other item on continued business today is the uh, Mass Association of School Committee Annual Joint Conference. Mrs. Dunn, uh, do you want to turn it over to you? Yes, thank you. Uh, came to my attention, thanks to Mrs. Maccarelli, we did not take a vote which is needed to send a delegate to represent Peabody to the annual MASC conference in November. So the materials are in our packet um, and... Motion to nominate Ms. Dunn to be the delegate for the city of Peabody <laughs> and for the school department to pick up all of her expenses. I was, <laughs> I was waiting for that motion to be made. <laughs> Uh, and we're making that motion. In large print. I make that motion in perpetuity, so long as Ms. Dunn is a member of the school committee. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank all you, very Mr. Much. Hockman. You've heard the motion by Mr. Hockman, seconded by Mr. Swanson. Uh, all in favor? Uh, and thank you, Mr. Dunn, for being uh, our voice with that committee. And you do a lot of research and a lot of work with that group that you bring back to us, that's very helpful. So well, uh, very you. appreciative of your efforts in that regard. So thank, thank you. you very much. And I, I appreciate it because honestly, it is an honor to be selected by you to represent you at the delegate assembly. Um, this year, there are only six resolutions, but I will tell you, I have been appointed to the resolution subcommittee for MASC to work on those. And uh, they were brought forward, they're very thoughtful. Some of them, you'll often see the resolutions are ongoing every year, but it gives us the direction of where to push at the state and federal level and what the committees across the Commonwealth are looking for to make sure that we're getting everything possible for the students across all kinds of different situations, different school districts, different economics, different demographics. So uh, the, the assembly is, is really very, very interesting. And I 
honestly, I welcome anybody to go to that conference, even if you can only go down for the day. I wish it wasn't so far away. That's the only difficulty for everybody I know. But it's, it's really cool. And they do bring forward a lot of those seminars throughout the year. So thank you again. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Okay, uh, now go to superintendent's report. I know there's some remaining items. Dr. Vidal, I'll turn it to you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we just have a couple more things and a little bit more detail on uh, the item that we were discussing around the curriculum implementation. But before we do that, uh, we do have a donation uh, that I'd like to bring to the committee. Um, just very generous donation from a Amy Moken uh, to the Center School teachers. Uh, every teacher at the Center School got three reams of paper, four boxes of tissues, and 25 sets of earbuds. And so the earbuds for every single teacher was really uh, an impressive donation and, and a thoughtful donation because now that we have the one-to-one -one, uh, Chromebooks and the kids have opportunities to do some com computer work in the classroom, uh, you know, they might be separating to centers and there's a technology center, having those earbuds for every student that they can keep in school um, and, and they're very discreet um, is, is very helpful. So uh, Amy's been a very generous donor to the center school uh, and, and to the, the school department as a whole. Uh, so I just like to bring this forward of, of her generosity and also so I'd um, like to thank her for the donation and send a letter of gratitude on behalf of the committee. Great. Thank you, Amy. Uh, Amy's been a um, big supporter of the Peabody Public Schools and in our city in general, so very appreciative of that. Uh, motion to uh, receive and uh, send a letter of gratitude made by Mr. Miko, seconded by Mr. Olympio. All in favor? Okay, great. Aye. Thank you. Okay, and so uh, just a continuation um, of our report on the, the curriculum implementation. Uh, and again, the, the civics and the Holocaust uh, studies is, is really important to us because we want to make sure that the kids have a very well-rounded um, education and that they can think critically and deeply. Um, in addition to that, uh, one of the big things that we're doing is, is utilizing uh, the new curriculum materials that we have um, for our ELA implementation that Dr. Chase spearheaded uh, for our high quality instructional materials. So I will turn it over to her again uh, and she can just finish uh, discussing some of the ELA curriculum implementation and then the same process that we use for ELA we'll be implementing for our uh, middle school science this year as well. So with our K through five ELA implementation, you recall last year we went through a whole year long process for identifying the materials that would be a best fit for PBD teachers and students. And we landed on into reading. So now comes the difficult part of implementation and how do we support teachers as they do that. So we started early before school let out. We made sure that we chased after some grant money so that we could offer professional development and pay teachers to attend that. And that gave them about five hours of a head start on what to do with the, the new curriculum materials. Um, we continued that with in-person training at each grade level in August so that they had a day of in-person training and then a follow-up of online training the day after that. Um, we now get into, it's been about a month that they've had that in their classrooms and they're getting to the first module assessment. And so with that, that's a great opportunity to check in with teachers and see how it's going. So under Emily Moore's direction, there'll be an implementation team. And that's really to send the message that we don't just buy materials and then drop them in your lap and then leave, but rather this is a year of ongoing support as we try things out for the first time. Um, so that group will meet this week and they will be the liaisons to their schools and grade levels to talk about what support is needed. To complement that, um, we're involved in a learning acceleration network and we've chosen to focus on the implementation of these materials. And the reason for that is in the spirit of continuous improvement, um, we as an admin team know that we can always do better to support teachers. So we have enlisted the help of a coach at DESE's um, expense and they come in and they help us look for ways that we can be better supporting teachers as they go through this implementation. Um, that will be for the year one adoption. Um, and then we are looking at having that district-wide implementation team meet five times throughout the year. There'll be a two-hour meeting in the morning for teachers uh, representing their buildings for grades K through two, and then two hours in the afternoon so that teachers at the three through five level, and it can be very specific to those grade spans. Um, we're looking to use data to support teachers as well. So looking at that module assessment, 
the first time you give any sort of assessment, there are bugs to work out, whether it's the technical bugs of how do you use the computer to be able to generate that data to what do I do with it now that I've collected it. So that's also part of the support as well. And we'll be working with teachers um, during data meetings to help them understand what types of data they're generating and then how to best support kids as they show where their strengths and challenges are. And I'll stop there and see if there are any questions. Thank you, Dr. Chase. Any questions at this time? Okay, this is done. Just one, um, as far as the field testing, I'm sorry, it would be on the, um, the science, yes. On the field testing, will, um, How, how how big of a cohort would you be using? Is it like in each grade or just like one per one class per grade? So we just started that HQIM process at high quality instructional materials for the science at the middle school level. And that was a natural outgrowth of um, they had their current materials that were in need of um, renewal. So in realizing that we could be better aligned. So that's where that started from. So we'll go through that process. Um, I don't know how big that field testing will be. When we did the K through five ELA, we did not say no to anyone. So when they stepped forward and said, I wanted to test out these materials, we were there to be able to, to do that. I didn't want anyone to feel like they had been left out and couldn't give an opinion. So we made it as broad as we needed to. I imagine that that would be the same type of process we would take. Um, the companies that we work with, the vendors, are more than happy to provide materials as necessary. So right now, we started with a very small group in the summertime. That was a kickoff meeting. Um, Dr. Meyer is working on creating a schedule so that we can create um, a group that includes as many people as needed to meet throughout the year and start to take those steps similar to the way that we did the ELA adoption. Okay, thank you. I, I do remember when you had talked about it uh, last year about the ELA curriculum that you had such a huge amount of people who wanted to test some materials. That was why I wondered if it would be the same thing. Which I think we had 17 that ended up field testing for us for the K through five. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we would have 17 at the middle school. It's just a smaller concentration right. of teachers, but certainly they'll have opportunity upon opportunity to, to put in their input. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Any other questions at this point? Okay, Dr. Chase. Okay, and so in addition to the curriculum adoption that you'll see at the middle school, uh, so we think of the, the high quality materials that we have and implementing them, making sure that we have a well-rounded curriculum. And then we also know that the pandemic impacted uh, our students. So um, we were able to work with a, uh, an organization called Springboard Education to provide free tutoring uh, to some of our schools. So this is through another partnership with DESI. And so we'll be able to implement this in four of our elementary schools uh, where we'll hire district teachers to provide virtual tutoring after school hours uh, and Springboard will fund this completely. So um, our teachers will get paid and they'll be able to tutor our kids and help accelerate their learning. Uh, we're focusing on K-3 to literacy because we did see that you know early literacy was impacted by the pandemic the most. Um, but it, it allows this tutoring for approximately 100 students um, and it's gonna run from mid-October through December and then if it's successful and, and we have uh, a need and a desire to do it, we can run another round in the spring as well. Um, so this is just an opportunity uh, uh, that we continue to outreach, and I have to, you know, thank Dr. Chase for finding this opportunity. And then we worked um, with Eric Blake in the union to uh, identify the schools. Uh, it was four Title I schools that, that will have this opportunity, and then we'll try to expand it. So it's a great opportunity for our teachers to um, to make a little bit more money and get paid outside of school, and for our students to be able to do this, and it's fully funded um, by this grant through Springboard Education. So we're really excited about this as an opportunity, again, to um, really provide our students with opportunities for acceleration and to address some of um, the learning loss that we saw. Um, so this is just another opportunity for us to, um, just, just to provide some more for our kids. Um, you know, in, 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 the, in the next coming months. Okay, thank you, Dr. Vidala. Any questions on that, Mr. Swanson? Thank you, through you to Dr. Vidala. Um, I think it's awesome that you have, you're actually able to fund the grants and use the resources to get our, uh, these, these, these to the, our students. Um, the nine, the, the participants, 
are they based on scoring? Are they based on teacher recommendations, or is it put out there that to, to the families for uh, participation? So it's completely voluntary. Uh, it's open to any K to three students in the in these uh, four elementary schools that, that we're identifying. Uh, and so they do want Title I schools, so schools that have a concentration of, of students on free and reduced lunch. Um, and so we've we've identified that we're not going to turn anybody away at this time. Uh, and you know, it's, we'll, we'll see how many students can do it. It is after school, so it's you know we, we know that that is overwhelming for some of our little guys and girls. Uh, but we do want to make sure that we have that opportunity for them. Uh, and they did say that if uh, we get more than 100 students that they would be able to bring on an additional teacher to, to be able to support that. Thank you. And then how, how is word get out to the families? So Springboard is an organization that has all of the materials already developed. So essentially they send me a flyer. Um, if we want, we can target families and see if we can pull in those 100 students. Uh, there is a family involvement component with it. So they would need to agree to the terms of the, the tutoring, which would mean attending a workshop. Um, we do a virtual format so that we can get more students and not worry about pickups, drop-offs, or conflicting schedules. And so that will give teachers enough time to get home, turn on the computer, kids enough time to get home. And then in between the tutoring sessions, there are family check-ins, family workshops, things of that sort, understanding that the family component is a key to that success as well. Excellent, thank you. Sounds like it's the word's getting out and it's well structured to make sure we have good participation for those that choose. Thank you very much again for putting that out there for our students. Yeah, and, we, and we've identified our, our schools with the greatest need and, and, and larger size schools. So uh, the Carroll School, the Center School, the Welch, and the Brown will be the four schools that participate in the first round. And we'll see how it goes. And uh, if, if we can expand it, we'll certainly look to do that. But we wanted to really find our high concentration um, of schools with, with high needs and make sure that we're, we're providing those uh, resources as best we can. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. And uh, thank you for that report. Thank you. Our next we'll go to public participation. Is there anyone in the audience today that would like to come forward and speak? Seeing no one, anybody? Uh, if anybody online would like to raise their hand to speak. Seeing none at this time. Okay. Uh, we do have one written communication today, a very well written letter uh, from two of our retired teachers, Gene Marchetti and Jerry Hallinan. Uh, it's a thank you letter to Joe Fidalgo of Aggregate Industries, uh, thanking Aggregate Industries, as they have now for uh, a few years, uh, they assisted with supporting uh, the Christine J. Barbuto Memorial Garden, um, you know, beautifully landscaped the area for our 21st anniversary of our 9-11. Uh, we had a, uh, some wonderful ceremonies in our city, and um, Aggregate Industries did a tremendous job. So I just wanted to have this letter from Gene Marchetti and Jerry Hallen and to be uh, received. Motion to receive. Okay, you've heard the motion by Mrs. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Swanson. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, on the motion, Mr. Amico. Uh, through the chair, thank you. Um, and a big thank you also to uh, Gene Marchetti and, and Jerry Hallen, uh, who go up there often and um, spoke to Mr. Hallen the other day, and, and they're up there once a week just cleaning up. And uh, that space is being utilized by uh, teachers and students. Um, it's a it's a great little spot uh, for an outdoor learning um, environment. So I just wanted to also thank um, Mr. Hallen and Ms. Marchetti for their work with this as well. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Miko. Okay. Subcommittee reports. Uh, education, Mr. Miko. Um, I think uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Chase took care of all that. Thank you. It's it's easy to have her in charge. And um, I think, sure, Ms. Dunn, did you want to add something? Yes, actually, if I could, I'd like to. I'd like to request that an item be referred to the education subcommittee, but also for, for school committee um, input. The issue of reestablishing our uh, relationship with the Essex North Shore. It's called the After Dark Program, but it's all also called the CTE Program. Uh, I'm sorry, CTE Expansion Program, which would allow some of our juniors and seniors to spend the morning in our high school getting their academics, but the afternoon they would go to Essex North Shore for training in um, very specific trades. And uh, I'd like to have that worked on so that with the goal of this year, being able to put that in place for students to be able to select that course next year. 
Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. So we'll put that item into the education subcommittee. Mr. Miko. And if we could, through Dr. Vidala and um, Dr. Chase, if we could um, get everyone together, uh, all the uh, all the key people that we would need to uh, have a meeting and maybe set something up in the near future and uh, really just put all our minds together because it's an incredible program and a great yes. opportunity. And um, hopefully now we're, we're out of COVID, um, we can really um, help a lot of kids who want to extend their programs and so forth. So mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you both. Finance, Mr. Olympio. I think we covered it. Right? I think we did. School safety? Nothing to report. Okay. We'll hold athletics and wellness, quality and standards. Mrs. Dunn? Actually, I have nothing to report for a meeting scheduled, but there is something that we talked about when we did our day away with um, goal setting. And one of the things that the school committee needs to follow through is on setting our goals to support the goals of the superintendent and the goals of the community through the um, strategic plan. So I'd like to see if that might be something that we could do through the subcommittee, get some preparation going to make sure that we're able to put forward uh, you know, good solid goals of the school committee on what we want to see happen this year and what we would like to work on. So if that's okay with everybody, I'm kind of referring something to the subcommittee. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Good suggestion. Okay. Parent and student advisory boards, Mrs. Dunn. We have our first parent advisory board meeting tomorrow night here at the Higgins at 7 p.m. Our guest of honor is Dr. Vidala. Uh, notice went out to all of our PTOs and to the parent advisory board representatives, and I'm hopeful that they'll have a great turnout. Great, thank you. Oh, and thank you, Dr. Vidala, for coming, because this is gonna be a good way to start the year. The parents will be able to find out what Dr. Vidala would like to see happen this year. So, looking forward to it. Uh, building and grounds, we do have a building and grounds meeting uh, for scheduled for October 6th uh, to take up a few different items on that date. So we'll have a report following that. I'm sorry, Mr. Swanson, did you want to add something? I just had some, Mr. Hawkman, except the way I have some updates from him as well. Oh, please, I'll turn to you. Thank you. You, you, you took my big note of the meeting sorry. this week, so <laughs> it's my first time uh, giving a report, so no stealing. Um, so we have a few updates that were about the facilities around the, uh, the district. Um, the air conditioning at the Peabody Vets Memorial High School will be fixed tomorrow. Uh, we've had some he heating issues there. Uh, we know the lights at the high school as well were adjusted. The dark alley we had were adjusted by, by uh, finding the timer. That is uh, there. Um, and then we have the center school and the south school PA systems, which we know have been old and sent antiquated, are scheduled to be updated over the next few weeks. So great updates. And then the uh, speakers, are one of the big subjects of speakers at the school, uh, high school's field, uh, waiting for a few comp components to come in, and then the contractors will be on site in the next few weeks to get those fixed, hopefully before their seventh home game. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. Okay, Special Education Parent Advisory Board, Mr. Olympio. Yes, I posted we're having our first meet in Monday, October 3rd at the Higgins at 6.30, and I would like to invite Dr. Vidala and uh, actually Ms. Crompton to maybe speak for a few minutes, that'd be great and look forward to seeing everybody. Thank you, Mr. Olympio. We'll hold uh, the City Council Legislative Delegation and the Redistricting Subcommittee reports till the next meeting. Our next scheduled meeting is Tuesday, October 11th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Uh, business for that, um, or items for that agenda can be handled in the regular course of business as we set the agenda. And I entertain a, no further, nothing further, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you very much for a good meeting.